Very special ACRP TV segment. We are on assignment. We are on location. We've got two celebrities here with us who just finished the ACRP Ride for Diversity, 334 miles from Pittsburgh to this very spot here in Old Town Alexandria, the ACRP headquarters. Sergio Romani and Rick Fisher are both here. Great longtime friends to ACRP, big advocates of diversity, thought leaders in this field. Guys, thanks so much for joining us today. For really biking happy. in. Yeah, really happy to be here. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. So, it's been a fun week. This is so exciting. So you've had this ride. You've covered 300 plus miles. You've raised over $21,000 for diversity. Wow. Which is kind of cool. It is way cool. But you, so you've just gotten off the bikes literally moments ago. How are you guys feeling right now? Feeling good. Yeah. Feeling good now that we're here. I mean, today was a rough day. Um, yeah. A lot, a lot of rain. A lot of rain. A lot of mud. Um, cold. Yeah, it was cold. I, I did find out that um, some of the gear that I've been trusting for years is uh, not as waterproof. As, uh, as, as <laughs> Water clean. resistant sometimes is the term of yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I've got some Yelp reviews to do. <laughs> Very good. All right. So you talked about, we were talking before we got on the air here, you were talking about encounters with cicadas and a few different things like that, some inconsistencies along the trail. I mean, you've survived, you're here in one piece, right. which is good. Yeah, right. But did you have any exciting adventures along the way? Yeah, so being attacked by cicadas. Yeah, I think the cicadas was probably. It. I wasn't expecting the cicadas, and I wasn't. Once I figured it out, I wasn't expecting each day it got worse. You know, but mm -hmm. um, you know, I think otherwise though. Um, other than that wrong turn we took right out of Pittsburgh right. Right, for about nine miles. And, right at uh, the very beginning, that was one of the bumpiest yeah. first yeah. three miles. Right. And, yeah, we have people uh, like actually pulling beer cans at us down this like industrial road. Yeah, <laughs> empty beer cans. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, 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 not the community. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We're yeah. racing the beer. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> No, but you know what? Besides that, it was uh, it was safe, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. it, it was a lot of fun. You know, there were struggles. Um, there are days that you're like, "What the hell am I doing out here?" So, how many miles were we doing a clip? Was it about the same every day, or did it depend on the terrain? Yeah, yeah. About sixty a day. Okay. Yeah, sixty. You had one short day, which actually worked out <laughs> right in the middle, and uh, gave us a rest period in a nice town and yeah, good food. Uh, the nice thing about it too, we we met a lot of people that were doing going the same way as we were going, and we'd see them each each stop. Uh -huh. So we kind of you know catch up there with yeah. them and uh, made it made it into a race. With some yeah. of them, uh, and uh, not really a race, right, but, right. Uh, but in my mind that was racing. But, uh, yeah, no, yeah. The yeah. second day, I think. Well, I mean, you know, there were there were different days that were really difficult for different reasons. The second day, it was really hot. It was really humid. And it was uphill all day long. Okay. So it wasn't a steep uphill, but it was steep enough that if you stopped pedaling, you stopped. Right? Yeah. So like you just had to keep grinding and grinding, grinding. And my bike, I was carrying because, because we were supposed to camp like two, maybe three nights, depending on what, which didn't happen. We camped one night because it was too hot. Right. So um, I was carrying just over 50 pounds of my bike. So it was a plus his bike, yeah. Oh, oh, my bike and all my bags weighed 41 pounds. So, nice. uh, okay. but you had some equipment failure or some equipment letting you down. Well, once once we got into the end of the rain, uh, you know, but but otherwise, I have to say, I almost said it on like two miles back. We had no mechanical failures, yeah. no flats, nice. no you okay. know, nothing. So bikes held up great. Yeah, now, I know you guys are both avid riders, but have you ever done a ride, a sustained ride like this? Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering if this. What surprised you going into this ride? What you expected? What you didn't expect? I didn't know. Um, so, you know, I do a lot of riding, mm -hmm. right? And I do a lot of endurance riding, whereas Rick is more of a mountain biker. So mm -hmm. mine are, you know, yeah. like going out, doing a lot of 50, 60, 70 mile okay. rides, but never back to back. So uh, I trained, the most I did was, I think, three days in a row. And I just, all right, we'll figure it out, right? Right. Um, and, you know, to, to that point, I typically don't wear like a chamois, like padded uh, bibs <laughs> to work on the Yeah, and uh, I, I obviously did, um, but I also don't typically use the cream that you know the, the butt butter or the chamois cream. Um, and I, I took some, but didn't use it for the first couple of days. Right. And I quickly <laughs> learned that it it's works. It's got a value. Yeah, yeah. 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 those are the so, things you learn. Yeah. All right, so now let's shift gears and talk for a second about why you guys did this. Yeah. You know, this is a serious. Cause you guys obviously will both believe in it. You put your money where your mouth is and your bikes. Yeah. So talk about why diversity is so important to you in the clinical trial workforce and the patient population. So I think to me, um, patient population, I mean, it just, you know, ethics, morals, I mean, it's just the right thing. I mean, to, to truly have an outcome um, that is 100% um, safe, uh, 
and effective, you have to have a diverse population in, in my mind. And to have a diverse population, you really have to start with the workforce. You have to, you know, and, and, and drive it from there. And, and that's just something that we fell short at um, for, for so many years. And, 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 you know, I think in the last year, I think uh, even outside of our industry, I mean, you know, there's a lot going on uh, around diversity, uh, and, you know, just, just in the news and in community and stuff. So um, to me, it just, just made sense to, to do this. It was Sergio's idea, though, so I have to, I have to give it to you. Yeah, I mean, I feel, um, you know, same way. It's, uh, you know, it's good for humanity. It's good for people. Um, it's, it's, it's very important for science, right? I mean, you need a cross-section of different demographics for a good clinical trial. Uh, and that's why now clinical research as a care option has become so important over the last year or so. Uh, because of a lot of the wrongs that have especially happened in the African American community, right? There are this very large populations that just do not trust clinical trials. Right. And you can't blame them, right? So if I'm an African American man and I walk into a research site to test a diabetes drug or a COVID vaccine, and it's all blonde hair, blue like people, am I going to trust them? Probably not, right? right. So let's strive diversity in the workforce. Yeah. It's needed, right? I mean, diversity in the workforce is needed, period. Um, and it's it's something that ACRP can absolutely work at driving. So, you know, we were already thinking about doing this right. I've been dreaming of this right for years. Um, and then last fall, I decided to do it. And then I wrote, wrote to, the, exactly. wrote yeah. Rick into doing it. And we were just going to do it. And then I said, hey, let's make it mean something, right? Yeah. Like, let's raise some money for ACRP. Diversity. Well, and you must be really encouraged uh, by the outpouring and response. Absolutely. I mean, I, the initial goal, I think, was 15, and that was yeah. pushed back, and it was 20, and now we're over 21. And of course, I'll remind people, we'll put a link next to this video. There's still plenty of opportunity for you. Yeah. Yeah. But you guys have broken several of the, of the goals, yeah, and, and it's nice, too, because it's some big contributions, some small, but a lot of people are, are chiming in with money and enthusiasm. That, that's what I was going to say. I mean, not just the money, but you're right. I mean, we've had some great donations, uh, some great, I mean, too many to count uh, or too many to go through here. Um, but, you know, what I've seen through LinkedIn, especially, uh, is just the, the comments and support, um, yeah. you know, outside of the, the money uh, has been great. And that, that makes me feel really good that we're, we're really doing something that, 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 you know, is making a difference. Right. Yeah. yeah. And we're going to do it again next year. All right. Nowhere. We're going to do the same route. We're here first. All right. Figure out another route, but uh, Rick and I, we need a couple months to recover, but uh, <laughs> we're going to start looking for a few more riders, right? I mean, I don't yeah. want like this to be like, a thousand people ride, but you know, if you know, we, if we get five or ten mm -hmm. people to yeah, want to do a multi day ride and raise money for diversity again, it would be great. Fantastic. Right. Right. Well, I think it's time to let you guys rest. They I literally, they literally just gotten off the course about 20 minutes ago. So, so these guys right. deserve so a break, they deserve a beer. I want to thank you all for joining us. This has been our special ACRP TV talking about ACRP's Ride for Diversity with Rick Fisher and Sergio Armani. Two great guys. Thanks for joining us. Thank you guys. I applaud you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you everyone.